Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be continuing to work with our ability system by creating our ability component. So let's go into our abilities folder, right click and create a blueprint class that is of an actor component type. We call this BPC for blueprint component and we will choose the name of ability for it. So BPC ability. This one will be reminiscent of things we have already done. We remove the tick. And first of all, what we want to do when we begin play in our uh, uh, blueprint component is we want to save down a reference. And the reason for this is because we make use sometimes of... Actually, do we? Let's... Let's skip that and see if we actually need it. I'm not entirely sure. I, I forget. Uh, so anyway, so having an ability, you need to have a few certain things. This will be sort of like a status effect blueprint components. It will be sort of our container of our abilities, just like that one was a container of our uh, status effects. So starting off would be good to make a variable called available abilities and we'll make this of the type bp uh, ability that we created in the last episode we'll make sure to make this of the type array so we can have multiple abilities of course might be boring with just one and the functionality we want to do is first of all we want to have the ability to actually add an ability so create a function and we'll call this add ability, but we'll call it by class also. And the reason for that will become apparent soon. So with this, we then say we want to have an input. We want it to be of the BP underscore ability, but we want, don't want to have an object reference. Now we want to have a class reference. So we get the class reference in here. We'll name this one still ability class. From here, we can then say spawn actor, like so. And we can actually, yeah, I think we want to have that because, okay, so I was talking about we wanted to have the variable saved here. If we check, owner here needs to be an actor object reference and instigator needs to be a pawn object reference. And if we go to our begin play now, we can uh, save that for later. So essentially, if we get an owner, you can see we get an actor uh, object reference from this, but we needed a pawn reference. So by casting this to a pawn and then saving it, we can have this pawn reference for later. So we don't need to get it every time that it's uh, necessary to make use of it. So we'll just call this one owner ref. We might want to call it even. Uh, owner on rep or something like that. That's good. Anyway, going back to our add ability by class, we can now drag out our owner pod reference and we'll just hook that up to both owner and instigator. And we want to split the spawn transform because it doesn't like it to have a transform that's completely blank, which is what gets as an error message down here. So compiling now should be fine. And now we want to actually, so now what we have done here, we have sent in a class here. We want to spawn the actor so it exists in the world, and then we want to keep track of it. So that's what we have our array for here. So we'll drag that one in and say we want to add uh, an ability to it. So we'll add this ability that we just created, like so. And now we have the ability created. After that, we can return for now. Like so. Another thing we might want to do is to actually use our abilities, right? So let's create a function for that. We'll call it uh, use ability. The ability here or the, the function here will take an input of the type integer, which will represent an index of the ability that it tries to use. So we call it ability index. From this index, we will then be using it with our array. 
and we'll be getting whatever copy of that uh, array index is and then try to use it. So since these are abilities and we created the blueprint class, we can now say attempt use ability on this one. Like so. And after that, we can essentially say return. We don't need to do a whole lot more than that right now. So now you might be wondering, well, that's all good and fine, but how do we actually get all of these abilities added then? Well, we could make it easy for us and make a sort of initialization uh, function. So we can do something, initialize abilities. This is a function that we can use to have uh, call from the outside and then add a bunch of abilities. So if we get the BP ability, and again, we want to make sure that it's the class reference type. And then we say uh, known abilities, for example. And we make sure that this is of an array type, like so. We can now just simply loop on this one, like so. And on this loop, we can then say add ability by class. And we have a class, so we'll just hook that one up. And then we're done here, essentially. This allows us to have it very easy to add abilities now to our characters. So if we go to our third person character, first thing we want to do is to make sure that we implement the interface that we created in the last episode. So class settings, interface, BPI, get mesh. We're going to be needing this later. Second, we want to add a component. So BPC ability. And we can keep that name. So if we were to take a key, of course, we have run out of keys. Let's cheat and make some more keys. So keyboard E, for example. So keyboard E, we can say we want to add our abilities. Now, this, this is, of course, not optimal. We would do this at a different place, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, so we can say initialize abilities like so, and it will just want to take unknown abilities um, array from us to uh, send in here. So in our third person character now, in this case, we can create a variable here saying uh, starting abilities, make it again of the type BP ability. Again, making sure that it is of the class reference type. And again, making sure it's an array. And we can just hook this up to this function. So now when we press E, we're going to take our starting abilities, sending it in here, and it should be creating abilities for us. So if we do this, we create an ability here. We'll say we want to have the BP ability, since that's the base class and the only one we have currently. And then we'll also go into our blueprint component to make sure that we can actually see this. So we'll make this available abilities exposed so we can see it. So we'll start and we'll press the E key and we'll go out by pressing shift one F1. We'll find our character, third person character. We'll go down to its ability blueprint component. You can see we have available abilities here and we can see that our ability is actually available. So we're actually able to now do this to our character, uh, giving him abilities. And then if you wanted to, we have also created now the ability to, to add an ability by class. So you can dynamically in the game, maybe you have like a weapon. You, when you have it equipped, it gives you a certain ability that you normally don't have. You can just add it by class like this to the character and it has it available. Of course, then you would need to make another function that can remove the ability for when you unequip it as well. But you see that it's very easy to add and expand upon this. Anyway, I think that will, um, well, maybe. Actually, let's add a little bit more. Um, going to our blueprint component for abilities, we can create an event dispatcher. What we want to do is we want to be able to communicate. Uh, this is not going to be super clean. You can make something more uh, flexible or, or like more surgical if you want to. But I want to create a event dispatcher here saying essentially, Abilities available finished. So this is something that we can do when we are calling. 
Makes most sense when we are adding an ability by class. Because now we have added an ability, now we can say run this, because this, this has changed now. If we had a remove ability, we could do that as well then, essentially. Uh, so now we have an event dispatcher saying that our available abilities have changed. And this can be useful for many things, like our UI and, and things like that, and other things that might be listening. Um, but we also want to send some information with this. Of course, we want to send what actually abilities are available. So we will make sure to get a DP ability object reference of an array type and say that these are our abilities, like so. Compile and save. You can see that it's a new parameter. It will complain because it doesn't understand. It has a different name than uh, the event dispatcher over here. Refreshing it will fix this. So now it says abilities. Uh, compiling now, it still doesn't like it because we haven't plugged anything in, but we have an available abilities over here which we can plug in because that is what we're actually trying to communicate because we just added the new ability here, right? So this represents our new set of abilities that are available. So with that set now, we actually have the ability to listen in to uh, this blueprint component and see whenever the amount of abilities change and, and have some kind of reaction to it. And I think that might be a good place to actually stop this episode. Hope to see you in the next one. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.